Here is Broad against Randy Mack in the finals of the ESPN Cable TV Tournament. He added another knockout to his record, and we asked him about his desire to win, where it came from. I think a certain amount of it comes from an innate feeling or ability to have, and then uh, the, the secondary part is uh, largely dependent on your family and stuff, because if your family doesn't have a, an insight on life and has the, the, the morals and the values set for their standard, follow to, to trickle down through their, through their families, then you could go astray either way and stuff. But if you have a strong, solid family like I did, um, more or less, you're going you're gonna to reach some levels of, of prosperity. Donnie Long, seen here against Amos Haynes, scoring a third-round knockout. He has fought eight times in 1982. We asked him what he thought about James Broad's weight of 247. It's just like a blimp. <laughs> it's too heavy. The only thing James Broad can do is to stand there and hope to get lucky. How you going to move 250 pounds? You got to get tired if you try to keep up with me. It's impossible. Can you move 250 pounds? Yeah. Upside, down, sideways, and straight to the floor. Well, all that weight that James Broad has that Donnie Long is talking about hasn't hurt him in nine professional fights, but, Gil, you and I have seen him a few times before, and I think our opinion would be he could work a little better pared down. Well, as an ex-trainer, Tim, I get a little nervous every time I see a big guy like him go into the ring. I think that he could take off about 15 or 20 pounds, but uh, I think the most important thing for a heavyweight is the ability to take a punch. Ali took a better punch than anybody in the history of the game. James Broad takes a tremendous punch, and despite his weight, has stamina. He is going to wear down most heavyweights, unless they're exceptional. Sugar Ray Leonard, Donnie Long, uh, as James is broad, Donnie is long, he's tall, he's about 6'2", 6 6'3", 6 and uh, he's a young man in a hurry, looks like a very aggressive and certainly confident. He reminded me a little bit of you in that uh, pre-fight interview. Well, somewhat. You know, Tim, uh, Donnie Long is considered a great body puncher, and if uh, James Broad is overweight, then that body shot will take his toe, but he can't afford to let Broad lay on him too much because it's going to wear him down and Broad's going to come out on top. Well, we'll find out if Donnie Long can come out on top over the broad James Broad. Another heavyweight, of course, uh, who is getting a lot of interest in the United States because he recently moved here. is in attendance today, Harry Kutsia, number two ranked by the WBA, and he will be featured against unbeaten Pinklin Thomas on October 30th right here on CBS Sports. So he's watching these young heavyweights in action today. So we'll be back with round one of our featured heavyweight attraction. Back here at the Claridge Hotel in Atlantic City, New Jersey, uh, let's join our ring announcer, Ed Darian. Ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated and Joe Hand Promotions in association with the Claridge Hotel and Casino here in Atlantic City, New Jersey, are proud to present the Battle of Unbeaten Heavyweights, which is scheduled for 10 rounds. The judges, Charles Spina and Eva Shane. The timekeeper to Bell is Roy Johnson. And counting for the knockdown seconds, alternate referee Joe Cortez. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 10 round heavyweight bout, referee Larry Hazard. And now boxing fans introducing the principals. First in the red corner, wearing the white trunks with the black trim, he is weighing in at 220 and three quarter pounds. This gentleman is undefeated in 12 professional bouts with seven knockouts. From Columbus, Ohio, ladies and gentlemen, here is the master of disaster, Donnie Long. Turn the monitor around. Long. And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks with the red trim, he is weighing in at an even 243 pounds. This young man is undefeated in nine professional bouts with six knockouts. From Wildwood, New Jersey, boxing fans here is big James Broadax Long. Well, Broadax against the master of disaster. Uh, everybody's got to have a nickname in boxing, especially the heavyweights, it seems. Here's referee Larry Hazard up at all the times. There's be no holding behind the head, no pushing, no unnecessary wrestling. When I give a command for you guys to break, I want a clean break. Watch your low blows, watch the use of your head. In case of a knockdown, fighter going down, you must take a mandatory eight count. <coughs> fighter scoring a knockdown, you must go to the father's neutral corner, remain in that corner until I tell you to come out. 
either of you are knocked down toward the end of the round, the bell cannot save you. Anybody have any questions? Shake hands now, come out fighting at the bell. I'll tell you one thing, Donnie Law knows where the cameras are. He winked almost on cue at one of our mini camps up on the ring apron. There's the tail of the take. 25-year-old Donnie Long, 220 and three quarters. James Broad pared down indeed for this fight. Knocked off four pounds down to 243. He's got a four-inch reach advantage. And Donnie Long, a young man in a hurry, eight fights in 1982. He has served a six-year term in prison. He went in when he was 18. And so he has said, I've got to catch up in a hurry. I'm 25. I've got to stay busy and get myself up into the top ranks of the heavyweights. Unbeaten in 12 with seven knockouts. For James Broad with six KOs in his nine professional starts. He's had an outstanding amateur career. And indeed, Donnie Long was the Akron Golden Gloves champion and a two-time junior Olympic champion with an amateur record of 77 and four. I don't feel this fight's gonna last because I, I noticed when Roy sticks that jab out, it's so much powerful than uh, Diane Long's. Uh, unless Diane Long can keep out of the way of uh, James Boyd's big punches. Well, Long is certainly confident, cocky. Uh, his, that's been his presentation since arriving here in Atlantic City. And uh, a very pleasant, engaging young man. But he smiles. He smiled all during the introductions and winked at the camera and so on. So he uh, doesn't lack confidence. So how much skill he has, we'll uh, find out here shortly. These are two young heavyweights. James Ross, seen a couple of times before, a solid left hand landed by Long. strategy in this fight, Tim, is going to have to be to put the pressure on, uh, I should say, broad strategy, put the pressure on Long, maul him, and try to wear him out. This again, he's carrying an awful lot of weight, Tim. If, I think if I, if I was his trainer, I'd have him down to about 232. The kill Broad is so much physically stronger than uh, Long. Long can't afford to stay in the corner. They say Long is a good body puncher. I haven't seen a body punch yet. James Broad is managed by Robert Middleman and Wesley Muzon, trained by Mike Call. Donnie Long, handled by Joe Littman and Joe Moses. Moses, a criminal lawyer, whom he called while he was still in prison, saying, when I get out, I want to begin a career as a professional boxer and uh, become the best in the heavyweight division. He's been working very, very hard at it. Six-year-old son Donnie is here to cheer him on. Last fight. He won eight rounds beating Larry Givens, September 24th here in Atlantic City. Rod's last time out, an eight-round knockout of Randy Mack, also in September. Under 30 seconds to go, round number one. Tim, there haven't been too many successful heavyweights that, that have been over 230 pounds. It start to carry that extra weight and it can slow you down. Matter of fact, some of our best heavyweights, for example, Joe Lewis, was just about on the 200-pound mark. Now these guys are growing 242 pounds. That's a big man. Final seconds of the first round. James Broad and Johnny Law. Round number two heavyweights on our unbeatable afternoon of boxing here on CBS Sports. Earlier we saw Billy Collins with a thrilling fourth round TKO non-stop action over Ricky Witt, junior middleweight. Broad on the attack here against Donnie Long, but neither fighter able to land much. Long getting a couple of body shots in. Now they go toe to toe here in round number two. The, the kind of punches they're throwing now, anything can happen. That is for sure. Either one of them terribly accurate. And exactly. They don't know exactly where the punches are going, but the punches are starting to land now. Also earlier, Tyrone Crawley in a split decision, an excellent fight over Gene Hatcher. Crawley goes to 10-0. Hatcher suffers his first defeat. Unbe unbeaten Ricky Witt losing for the first time. Billy Collins losing to 11-0. And now the heavyweights. Not use that term loosely. In the case. Broad at 243 and Long at 220 and three quarters. Stop holding. Referee is Larry Hazard, and I uh, hope he's done his uh, weightlifting this morning because he's going to need it to push these two behemoths apart. Long can't afford to uh, exchange punch for punch with a guy as big as James Ward because. Broad is far too, he's, he's a large man, and he carries too much weight, too much additional weight. 
for a big man. Broad has pretty quick hands. When he gets inside, inside, he puts his punches together real well. He threw a couple of good body punches and came back up to the head. He's putting the pressure on Long. He's doing exactly what he has to do to win this fight. You know, I, th I think if uh, Broad should lean on Long a little longer, lo a little longer, it goes okay. together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's good. He can weigh him out. Sugar Ray Leonard and Gil Clancy with Tim Ryan, live from the Claridge Hotel in Atlantic City. Round two heavyweight action. We'll have an update on the NFL strike activity, if there is such a thing in a strike at the end of this second round. And if there isn't, box isn't football next week, we'll have more boxing for you on Sunday, July 24th. Lightweights, Kilmer Kennedy, the former champion against Roberto Elizondo, and welterweights, Felicio Bravo and Pablo Baez. That's next Sunday if there's no football. Look at this slugfest, the heavyweights. And this, this, I think, will be the difference in the fight. Long has hit Broad with some of his best punches, and it didn't even move Broad. He has a tremendous ability to take a punch. He's got Long in trouble. James Broad has Long in trouble in round two. This, this is when weight is a factor, because Long hit uh, Broad some big punches, and Broad is still there. Now he's coming back. Broad's coming back with some big shots. Time winding down in the second round. The crowd into the heavyweight action here. James Broad taking some control here in round two. Round number three, James Broad in blue, Donnie Long in white heavyweights, and uh, they are pounding away at each other in the early going, and most of the pounding in round two was done by Broad, who had Long wobble. Tim, I think he's discouraged Long, because Long set him up and hit him with a couple of his best punches, and all he got for his trouble was punishment back to Broad. I think Long is starting to think that it's going to be a long afternoon. Long to his best, his best artillery, Gil, and Broad still was there. You see, now Broad has become the aggressor. I think he's aware now that uh, Long is not able to hurt him anymore. I think he dazed him at first. Long was able to daze Broad temporarily, but never had any severe, you know, severe trouble. I like, I, I like the way Broad operates when he gets inside. For a big man, he puts his punches together real well. Very quick punches, changes up to that body and head. He's been well schooled. Yeah, especially to the body. Broad goes to the body very hard. With great authority. <laughs> Broad, big man in blue, and there's a good combination landed by Donnie Long, his first aggressive moment here in round three. And we mentioned an update on the NFL strike. We didn't want to get you too excited about that. We're not uh, aware that there's been any settlement, obviously, but we will have the latest news on what's going on in the negotiations at the conclusion of this fight. Broad and Long. For, for a small heavyweight like Long, it's not going to take just one punch. It's going to take an accumulation of punches to really get James Broad out of there. Long missing the overhand right. Came back with a fairly harmless left hook behind it. Broad just missed with a straight right hand. Now, Don Long is doing the wrong thing by backing in the straight line. And Broad is going to continue to uh, stay the aggressive and throw punches. You see, long should move in lateral position, side to side. Not giving Broad a straight target. A minute to go in this third round. Broad credits a, a friend in the Army days of, of getting him started in boxing and helping him to get his uh, life together. And uh, he started to box and went on to become an outstanding amateur. As we mentioned, he won the gold medal in the 1980 Olympic trials. 33 and 4 amateur mark. Inexperience. Inexperience on Broad's part. He, move, he moves long into the corner and he's still trying to hit him, hit him to the head. Once he starts unleashing those body punches, the head punches will come by himself and I think that will be it for Mr. Long. Maybe a little nick on the bridge of the nose of Donnie Long and White. Ringside here. He's been living and training in the Atlantic City area, and you'll see him here on CBS Sports against unbeaten Pinkman Thomas, October 30th. Texas Camacho and Melvin Paul on that same CBS card, Saturday, October 30th. We've got lots of outstanding boxing action coming your way. James Broad here in the fourth round in the blue trunks against Donnie Long and White. Broad has been in command since the beginning of the second round. 
He had long in trouble. Long keeps trying to con Broad. If, uh, if Broad hits him with a good punch, he just laughs at him and say that's nothing. What, what Broad should do is when he hits him, he tries to con him, hit him again. Smiling, Long smiling at him again. Saying, let's be friends. Well, Long seems to be getting a little desperate at times. He uh, throw a punch. He don't believe it's going to land. Um, fighting a big guy like Broad, it's very easy to get discouraged, especially when you throw your best artillery and the guy's still there. I don't imagine Donnie Long's been hitting many guys in weight 243. And that's got to be a big difference. It's a major difference, Tim. Broad is a big heavyweight. And he says he's not overweight. Two unbeaten heavyweights. We have had some of the unbeatens fall into the once beaten category this afternoon. Ricky Witt stopped by Billy Collins in four. Gene Hatcher losing a very tight split decision to Tyrone Crowley. Two outstanding fights. Is in position to throw that overhand right because Ross, if you notice his left hand, it lags, it stays down. If Long should time, time it and come up with the overhand right, he should connect. Well, Broad is not putting as much pressure on Long as I think he should. Started out in those first two rounds putting pressure on Long, doing a heck of a job. He's getting a little slow now. Now inside, as you pull those hands free and punch, make, make Long work inside. Long just kissed uh, James Broad in the cheek. I guess that's to make him angry. Did you get any points for that? I doubt it very seriously. <laughs> no, I told you he's trying to make friends with him in there, right? He's friends. Can you blame him? <laughs> Not at all. I think Broad uh, might be showing little signs of fatigue in both of them, it appears to me. Broad's been eight rounds three times. Long's been eight rounds only once. Most of uh, the fights for both these guys as pros have been short with Long scoring seven knockouts in his 12 wins and Broad six and nine. Final seconds. Round number five. James Broad on the left of your screen in the light blue trunks. Donnie Long in white. Broad has had his way most of the way. And he comes out aggressively here in this fifth round. Oh, I got it. I got it. Step back. Jim Bryan with Gil Clancy, Sugar Ray Leonard. We are live from Atlantic City. In Broad's corner, they told him, they said, get going. This guy's been around long enough. And he has come out with more aggression this round. Let's see if he keeps it up. I, I was about to say, I like to see Broad throw an uppercut to raise long hair when he goes down. Those kind of punches there thrown by uh, James Broad to the body. Very powerful and very effective blows. Yeah, I think that left hook hurt James Broad. Donnie Long trying to take advantage of what he thought may have been an injuring blow to Broad. Firing away, but not landing anything clean enough, and Broad does not appear to be hurt. Tim, I thought he was hurt in that exchange, too. He I takes a heck of a punch, and he got hit with some good, solid punches, and I thought he wobbled a little bit. But Donnie Long thought he did, but Broad comes out there looking still strong and fresh. Now, this is when the uppercut should come in by Broad. Every time Long uh, puts his head down, Broad should throw an uppercut. Way through round number five. That hurt him. That overhand right. Uh, the body shots. When you hurt a fighter, the body shots really do a number on also. It wears him down. Long can't believe that he's hitting Broad as easily as he is right now. He hits him with a punch and stops and looks instead of putting them together. <laughs> Notice the uppercuts, how effective they are. Inside. Step back, James. Step back. Under a minute to go, round five. Rod landing a combination. Those are the same kind of punches that knocked out Randy Mack and James Wood. 
Very effective punches inside. You notice, uh, get every time brought throws that up, it lands. Even to the body. Come on, come on. 20 seconds to go in the fifth round, scheduled for 10. Donnie Long in white, James Broad in blue. Unbeaten heavyweights. Nine seconds. Round number six, scheduled for 10, heavyweights, James Broad on the left of the screen in blue, Donnie Long in white. We are live from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy, Sugar Ray Leonard. Full afternoon of boxing here on CBS Sports Sunday, and Long comes out with a flurry in the opening seconds of round six. That was a nice combination by uh, Donnie Long. It kind of shocked James Broad for a while. Tim, these are big heavyweights, and they're landing some pretty solid punches. I'm surprised that there, you know, there isn't anybody that has really been in trouble as yet, and there was no, nobody been cut. I'm glad to see that. But they're landing some good, solid punches. Good right hand by Long. Overhand right scored. And Broad winks over at our broadcast table to say, didn't hurt. He meant it didn't hurt you, Tim. <laughs> that's, those, that's the uppercut again. Every time Broad lands that, throws that uppercut, it lands. All right, hold it. Step back. But I see now Dine Law can take a pretty good punch because Broad's been landing some big punches on him. So it's going to take an accumulation of punches from him also, although he has, uh, he's carrying more weight. There have been no knockdowns thus far. Nobody in any real serious trouble. Ron doing a little resting over there. The way we see it on the scorecards here, Brad has had his own way through five rounds. Occasional flurries by Long, but the rounds being dominated by James Broad. Well, James Broad has been the aggressive in the first round, just walking his man down. Another right hand landed by Long, but Broad punches right back. Well, he can take a shot. Yes, he can. He comes back every so often. He lays back for a while, and then he retaliates. Tim, but the fact that Broad can take such a tremendous punch, it, it's a great asset, in, especially in heavyweight boxing. Uh, again, I, I think that that was the most important uh, asset that Ali had. He could take a better punch probably than any, any heavyweight in history. Uh, a lot of fights, uh, for example, he fight with Frazier in Manila. If he couldn't take the tremendous punch that he did, he would have probably been knocked out in that fight. Now, Broad has that ability. Now, he's got to get himself in a little bit of shape, and he can be a very formidable heavyweight. Well, I think of Larry Holmes in that same context, too. He had a few close calls, scares of that kind, and some of his title fights uh, showed his ability to take a punch, shrug him off, and come back to win. Final seconds of uh, round number six. Round number seven, Tim Ryan, Joe Clancy, Sugar Ray Leonard, watching James Broad and Donnie Long. I'm always amazed uh, when a fighter is so apparently behind as is Donnie Long as he's sitting on his stool kind of grinning across at James Broad as though he was winning the fight. Uh, you really got to go out there and kind of make it happen in the ring. Broad on the attack sends Long back to the corner but Long makes a good move out. Overhand right, Long. I saw him setting it up. He picked that left jab and came over with an overhand right. How can, how can you saw it? And Broad didn't, right? <laughs> right in front of Broad. That right hand landed by Long. And that right cut. hand cut. He cut James Broad with that right hand to the left. All right, now get ready, Doc. Of his left eye, the corner of his left eye, and now Long winks over at his two. They're both getting into the act. They ought to be paying more attention to their fight than they are to the broadcast team. That was the best punch in the fight, that right hand landed by Long. I think that right hand by Long really shook up James Broad and uh, that cut. It's, uh, it's in a pretty bad spot, just above the eye, and just below the eyebrow. So what Don Long should be doing now, making a target. Try to work on it. Well, James Broad has had his way, as we've indicated. Long has landed a lot of punches that just have 
seemed to be ineffectual against Broad. That right hand opened the cut. Maybe it'll give him a new lease on life. It also might make uh, James Broad a little mean and a little more aggressive. Very again by Long. Ought to be discouraging for Long when he does land that he doesn't appear to do any real damage up until that cut. I noticed that Law can put his punches together very well also. Yes, it can. Those and he has combinations. He has a lot more snap in his punches than, uh, than James Broad. So Broad pushes his punches more than Long does. Under a minute to go, round seven. Long driving Broad back into the ropes. Another big combination by Long. He knows Long is stopping the body, then work his way up to the head. Turner did a good job on the minor cut to the bridge of the nose of Donnie Long a couple of rounds ago as we approach the 22nd mark of round seven. We'll be watching the broad corner to see how they handle the cut at the corner of the left eye. Coming to the end of round seven, and apart from the cut, it's certainly been the best round of the fight for Donnie Long. Nasty gash on the left eyelid of James Broad suffered in round number seven or in the eighth. Donnie Long in white. Broad has lost only four times ever. Both as an amateur. He is unbeaten in nine fights as a pro. We have him in command in this fight, but a big round for Donnie Long that produced probably a winning round and also the serious cut on the left eyelid of James Broad. You know, Tim, I didn't expect this fight to go this long. I felt that uh, James Broad, with his uh, his additional weight advantage, uh, would you know be too much for the smaller Donnie Long. But I see Donnie Long can he compensated for that with his uh, speed and his thinking ability. Broad has not leaned on Long very much during this fight, Gil. Yeah, you would think that usually a big guy like that will, will use that extra weight to, to muscle and lean and tire out his opponent. He hasn't done that very much. Well, as a matter of fact, Tim, right now, he's not even coming forward anymore. For the first six rounds, he did nothing but march towards Long, but he's a little more respectful of Donnie Long right now. And again, I'm surprised that he didn't move Long into the corners and onto the ropes and use that weight and be a very, very busy fighter inside. He is effective inside, but he hasn't gotten in there enough and hasn't worked enough. You know, Gil, I was expecting the same thing for Broad to out-muscle Long, and Long has a great opportunity now. Uh, Broad has a severe gash on his left, on his, on his left eye, and uh, Long should take advantage of it. He should, he should become even more aggressive. He hasn't been able to land a punch at that spot yet. And they did a good job in the corner. But until he gets a clean blow on it, we won't really know how well it will hold up. There is signs of fatigue on both fighters. Although I believe that Broad is uh, more tired of the two. You know, a lot of times if a fighter gets a cut, his corner men will say, now be careful, don't let him hit you on the cut again because then they have to stop the fight. I think that's about the worst thing you can tell a fighter. Because if he tries to change his style to compensate for the cut, he gets hit more and probably even more so on the cut. If, if, if I had a fighter that was badly cut, I'd say get out there and try to get that other guy out of there so we don't lose a fight on a technical knockout. Well, I was only cut once in my professional career, which was not a major cut. And um, I was somewhat concerned, and I asked my, I asked James Morton, I said, how was the cut? And he says, okay, just admit. I just got about two or three stitches. <laughs> you mean those cornermen lie to you every now and then? Every so often. Angelo Dundee would do that, too? It pays off, though. <laughs> my pal Angelo would never do anything like that, Ray. <laughs> he says the same thing about you, Gil. Hey, Angie and Jenks are no doubt looking in and having their own versions of what they're hearing here. Twelve seconds remaining in round number eight. James Broad in blue. Donnie White unable to get to that cut at all in this round. See, there are rules as to what you can do to stop a cut like that from bleeding further. What have they used on James Broad? Well, in the state of New Jersey, Tim, they have a, a rule that you're only permitted to use adrenaline chloride, a solution of 1-1000, and Vaseline to cover the uh, adrenaline chloride. But the most important thing for a corner man to remember is to put pressure on the cut and to use something that's cold to, to constrict the capillaries. If you have a good corner man, he can stop a cut with, with the, just the adrenaline chloride. All right. This is round number nine. Donnie Long in white. We 
see it. Uh, the fight probably stands 6-2 for Broad or 5-2-1 maybe. Of course, that's our view. We had quite a discrepancy in the earlier Crawley Hatcher fight, at least in the part of one judge. So uh, you never tell how we're going to see it. But the last couple of rounds have been Donnie Long's in our view. Broad just does not get off quick enough. Anytime he moves along into a corner or against the ropes, he's got to get that machine going. But Stop you know, punches flowing. Bro comes to life in the center of the ring, but once he gets his man in the corner, he lets him get away, which is a big mistake. He, he waits. He hesitates. He's, I don't know what he's looking for. Slam that right hand to the body and hook off it. Get something done. <laughs> Broad, unbeaten in nine professional bouts, 24 years of age, 25-year-old Donnie Long, 12 and 0. Good right hand landed by Broad. One thing that Long has done, he's established respect in James Broad. That's why Broad isn't freewheeling as much as he as he should. He's respectful of Donnie Long. He must have been hurt a couple of times in this fight. Broad throws a good combination, and he stops. He gets his man a little trouble, and he stops. And in fact, what he should do is continue to throw punches. Under a minute to go on the ninth round. Referee is Larry Hazard, scoring on the round system in New Jersey. Charlie Spina, Eva Shane are the judges. Well, Tim, the master of disaster, uh, I don't know. It, it, it could be a disaster for him unless he starts throwing more punches. It's my opinion. Well, after rounds seven and eight in which he rallied, uh, he has done little here in round nine. Under 30 seconds to go in the ninth round. He looks tired. They both do, but Long seeming to be a little more fatigued now than Broad. But Long has a great, he had a great opportunity ahead of him with that cut of uh, James Broad's eye. He's starting to get away. Started to bang to the body there and seemed to give up as though, uh, gee, I can't hurt this guy. Final seconds, ninth round. Donnie Long going to his corner and Eddie Aliano, the cut man, leads in to take a look at that. It's a bad problem for Donnie Long. Give him hell a full round. You know, here, boy. Oh, yeah, Donnie boy. Three minutes left. Give him everything you got, okay? Oh, yeah. But he's from New Jersey. Close him out, Donnie. Close him out. And underneath and over top. Another one. Looking into the corner of James Broad and listening in, they're working uh, a little more okay. busily there because he has the severe cut on the eyelid, but uh, they've done a good job at protecting it no, no. in the last few rounds. Come on. So here is the final round of this 10-round heavyweight bout. Donnie Long and James Broad cut gloves. As we see it, it would take a knockout for Donnie Long to win this bout. In Long's corner, he asked if the fight was close, and they said, yes, it's close, but remember, this is in New Jersey. So apparently they must think that, that Long's ahead in the fight. James Broad is from Wildwood, New Jersey. Born in Rivers Rouge, or pardon me, Greensboro, North Carolina. Donnie Long was born in Rivers Rouge, Michigan, now living in Columbus. If, if, if uh, Long's going to do anything, he has one more round to do it. This is the round for him. Do you guys agree that he needs a knockout to win? Yeah, oh, he needs a big rally. He has to really start uh, going to work now. At least impress the judges. A little more. They told him in the corner, give it everything you have. You only have three minutes. Instead of giving, he's taking right now. In this case, it is better to give than receive. Well, with a lot of fighters, Tim, they fail to uh, understand that that last round is always a deciding factor, no matter how close the fight is. Long landed that overhand right just as the referee Hazard came in for a break. I'm surprised that he hasn't tried to throw more combinations along, starting with punches to the body and then, then they're going to the head. 
Uh, Broad is wide open for a left hook to the body uh, when they stay outside. Very inviting target for that left hook underneath. Well, what we learned about James Broad is he certainly has the power of positive thinking. Donnie Long's presentation of himself as the master of disaster, a very confident guy, but there is a certain steely quality to James Broad, and uh, we've seen it here as he has rallied back uh, to win round nine in our view, and he's been the better man here. The has Long hurt now, Tim? He's hurt. Uh, I think what started was those body shots thrown by James Broad. Long trying to rally off the ropes directly in front of us. But Broad in control. Now they're toe to toe on the ropes. Broad and Long. 30 seconds left in the fight. Broad trying to finish off Long. Long refusing to drop. And punching plenty back. Of, plenty of hot Long. He's punching right back. He's not about to give up. Both of these men, they deserve a lot of credit. A great deal of credit. Final seconds of the fight. Two green heavyweights, they've absorbed a lot of punishment. Long taking more than Braun has least in it. And there's the end of the fight. And a tough 10 round battle between two big heavyweights. We'll be back with the decision here in Atlantic City. Right now, let's take you to our studios in New York and Brent Musburger. We are ready with our decision here in this heavyweight bout, James Broad and Donnie Long. Let's go to the ring announcer, Ed Darien. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a majority decision. And the scoring as follows. Judge Charles Spina scoring at 5-4-1. Judge Eva Shane scoring at 5-5. And referee Larry Hazard scoring at 6-3-1. And the winner, and still undefeated, Big James Broadax Broad! James Broad is the winner of this heavyweight bout. And a little closer than we saw it, our card would have agreed more with the referee 6-3-1 in favor of James Broad. James? James? <laughs> Here is James Broad, and uh, James, uh, we saw it more like the referee did, that uh, you wanted a little bit more convincingly. He had it 6-3-1. That's pretty much the way Sugar Ray and Gill and I saw it. Uh, it. You had your way most of the fight, really, until you got cut. Well, um, we felt that we was cut. We knew that he'd be working afterwards, after it, and uh, what we tried to do was sustain an attack plan. We, uh, however... Uh, Sustained some injuries to the hands, but uh, this is a game where you got to put up with pain. Didn't look like it bothered Jenny. Uh, on the other hand, uh, he looked like he could take a punch pretty well. Well, he could take a punch, but that's that solidification that our uh, mother and father instilled into us when we was young. Discipline and motivation will get you over every time if the desire is there. All right, the and, desire uh, was there, that. James. Congratulations to you. You're unbeaten in 10 and 0. Good luck the rest of the way with your pro something? career. I know I didn't knock Where, him out, but can I say something? Well, you could if we had time, but oh, we've got to we got to show another another bout on the card earlier this Fort afternoon. Yeah, say hello oh, to Fort Worth, Texas. Oh, all right, okay. <laughs> Thank you.